So whether you're a beginner with compass navigation or you just need a refresher because it's spring, I have three compass exercises to hone your skills today. Now spring is a great time to do this because there's snow and mud and you can leave tracks. And if you're somehow confused, you can just turn around and follow your tracks back. So if you use these techniques, I can pretty much guarantee that it will build your confidence in the outdoors. Welcome to Adventures in Reach. Are you limiting yourself? I hope to expand what adventures are possible for you and to escalate your fun, ability, and confidence. If any part of this video is interesting or helpful to you, feel free to navigate on down to the like button and hit that. It certainly helps other people find this video as well. So exercise number one is we're going to use a safety bearing. This one is physically easy to do once you know the compass, but it's mentally difficult to just remember that, right? Because you are still at your known location and a safety bearing, if you're unfamiliar, you can look at the video that I'll link at the end, uh, get lost then find your way where I explain that in detail. And essentially though, you're just having a road or a river, something long that you are going in that direction with that bearing and that you'll intersect it even if you're not going in a perfectly straight line. So I know when I left the house, I remembered at 78 degrees, I took the bearing and locked that in there. So I know that if I go to 78 degrees, I will hit the road. Now that is the first exercise that I'm telling you about because it's the most important because whether you're out looking for mushrooms or hunting or just exploring in the woods, you will have a way to get back a direction. It's really easy to get turned around out there. So set that safety bearing so you know where to go back. So the second exercise is about parallel travel. And so first we're going to mark our tree and you can mark high or low depending on how experienced you are. So if you're new to this and worried about getting lost, you can tie your flagging on pretty high so that you can see it from further away. We're just going to pick a random direction, find something cool out there that you wanna to walk to. For example, there's a birch tree over here that just caught my eye. I'm gonna to walk to that. I need to shoot a bearing, just like I did with my safety bearing. I'm going to point the compass at that, line up the arrows and look at the direction that I'm gonna be going. Before I do that, don't forget to note what your safety bearing is. Maybe write it down. So I have it all lined up and I have a bearing of 98 degrees. Here we go. Let's not stop there. Now that I made it to the birch, I'm going to keep going and take that same bearing, already locked into my compass, find another point, keep going. Make sure you are turning your entire body versus just the compass. It makes it easier to kind of line up in the direction that you are headed. Now, one thing that's really helpful when you're doing this is to make sure you are looking backwards. Everything looks different when you're looking at it from a different angle. If you do that, it's much easier when you turn around to navigate back. So trust me on this, just make sure you look backwards. Okay, so I made it to my last point here. So now I'm going to turn 90 degrees. So instead of Red Fred the Shed that got me here, I'm going to turn the compass until it lines up with a line that splits the dial in half, just like so. I'm going to look up the lines and dots and mirror etch all the way until I line it up with another object, such as this dead cutoff tree here. And I'm going to now pace off. Five and six, and I'm there. Now, I'm going to go from that line that splits it in half, and I'm going to spin until black is in the shed arrow. That is called the back bearing, and that is the opposite direction from the way that I came. I'm going to walk back that direction, and then pace it off and see how accurate I was. Black in red, 
that direction. Now be confident in the idea that you are leaving a track here. Now, if you are more advanced, then you could also do this when there is no snow or mud and those tracks are much less obvious. All right, so I made it to my tree, otherwise called a waypoint. Got another tree. Now I can see my pink flag over there, just to the left of the sun. But I'm not gonna walk to the flag. I'm going to keep following my bearing, use my waypoint. Once the flag is directly to my left, I'm going to stop, got our bearing, and make sure you're always walking to something. Don't just hold and walk, right? There I go, look backwards, get that mental picture. So the tree I picked is literally just about lined up so that the flag is over my left shoulder, right over there. So now I simply pace off to that flag and see how close I got, see how accurate I am. So here is one, four, five. So I'm one pace off. For the third exercise, we're going to be walking in a triangle. So not only will we be practicing our bearings and going from point to point and walking in a straight line and looking backwards, all of that, but we're also going to be practicing our pacing and really trying to get used to keeping track of that distance, okay? And there's some more advanced techniques that we'll get into later for how we'll actually use that in the field. You can go in any direction, but the easiest way to do this is start by heading north, which is at zero degrees or 360, same thing, right? You can do whatever size triangle you want. You just want each leg to be the same. So just like before, we're going to start at our marked point and we counter paces. So one, <laughs> two, three. Okay, 14 to this tree. Uh, let's, let's call that good for right now. Again, we can do bigger triangles later, uh, but the, right now the point is to just get, get used to this exercise. Next, we're going to turn our compass 120 degrees. So one third of a circle. So that gives us the other leg of the triangle, 120 degrees. So that mirror gives us a view from the top and then you kind of look through this notch and it gives you a point to walk towards. So I didn't make it to the object that my compass was pointing to, but I stopped at 14 paces right here. So now I'm going to turn my compass another 120 degrees, which is 240. Spin my body around until the two red arrows are lined up. I sight it in. 14 paces in that direction. One, 12, 13, 14. All right, 14 paces in that direction. Now you can see that I was about three or four feet away from that flag. When you're orienteering, you need to get close enough. You need to be able to find the object. Now that depends on how big is that object? Is it a road? Is it a pond, a, a deer stand? And how far away can you see it from? So don't get upset with yourself. If you get within 20, 30 feet, but you can still see this ribbon, because you did it. As long as you are improving and, and narrowing that uh, each time you do it. Now to challenge yourself more is come out here when these branches have leaves on them and then see if you can see these points. Again, it still depends on the height off the ground and how big the object is, but you can really vary the difficulty of this uh, by the time of year that you come out. I hope you consider subscribing for more attainable adventures and the information to make them happen. If you're interested in navigating with a compass but don't have one or would like to upgrade, I will put a link in the description for this compass. I've been using this model, this is a newer one, but I've been using this exact model for 15 years and love it. Using the affiliate link does not cost you any more money, but it does give a tiny bit of money to this channel for each purchase that I will use for purchasing equipment and resources to improve this channel. 
few features I like with this compass. One is the mirror, and you saw me using that where you kind of are able to sight, see the top of the dial, and find the point to walk to at the same time. Second feature is there's this little screwdriver and a screw in the back that you can use to adjust and set the declination. So if you are in one area a lot, you can set it and just be ready to go in that spot. The third cool feature is that this compass comes with an inclinometer. If you are guiding for somebody or doing some backcountry skiing and need to know the slope to assess the safety, then you have this to do so, and it's kind of cool to mess around with. Other than that, it comes with your standard features where it has uh, different measurements along the sides for different um, scale of maps, and I like that it's long when it folds out because now you have a longer uh, straight edge for doing triangulation and that sort of thing on the map. The other cool feature about this folding is that it protects the dial so you have a little less scratches. Check it out if you're interested and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Sun's going down and it's time for dinner so the only thing left to do is dial in my safety bearing and away I go. And wait, if you're interested, go ahead and click the playlist up here, get lost, then find your way. There's a bunch of other compass related videos in here that I'm sure you will enjoy. And let me know what you'd like to see next.